Hi, everybody. It's Tyler here at the Indiana Robotics Invitational checking in 1987 Bronco Bots. I have to admit, to me, this was the number one team that unfortunately didn't make championships that really deserved to. They have an absolutely incredible robot this year, and we can't wait to go through more. A lot of cool custom work we'll be going through on this robot uh, from their intake, following that note journey all the way through, some cool hooks on it. Talk about some of their cool conditional states and autonomous as well, too. So let's dive right into this robot and everything it has to offer coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Frank, let's start off talking about that intake there. I'd love to hear more about how that journey came to the intake you currently have right now. Anything yes. you want to point out with it? Uh, yeah, so our intake is a very robust structure. Uh, we decided we wanted to go under the bumper intake because having an over the bumper intake would mean it is more prone to defense, as in more damage. And so uh, on the front of our intake structure, we have a steel ballast just to protect us from defense. And so our intake is run by two Falcon 500 motors run by pulleys. And so they spin the top Versa roller and then the bottom roller with compliant wheels. Now, the reason why we went with a Versa roller on the top is just so that it can be sleek so that the note can easily go into the shooter because we were seeing issues with both rollers being compliant wheels where it was way too grippy and it was literally tearing the note to shreds. And so up here, we have these static rollers just to make it easy to pass through. And then we 3D printed these guiders just so that the node does not accidentally get into the electrical and just make the feed just a lot easier. Something I want to ask you, you mentioned the ballast. Usually most teams we talk to when they say they put ballast in their robots for CG reasons. Mm -hmm. You said it's for dampening on there. Can you talk to me just a little bit more how you tested that or, or like what really went into that to make sure that was effective for uh, you? Yeah, so the reason why we added that steel ballast is because just during, well, right before competition, we realized that the front of our intake started to bow in way too much. And especially at our first regional where you could definitely tell it was completely dented. And so we decided we wanted to add a steel ballast just because when we're either going right up to the subwoofer, right up to the amp, or just facing defense, that the intake structure will not completely like bend in and like completely allow it to not work. And so we were definitely seeing those issues right before our first event. Before we pass over to Kale, can we bring in a note and just kind of see how your intake works? Uh, yes. And so feeding the note into the shooter is as easy as like that. It's a really nice, easy process as it goes through on that. Let's talk more about that shooter, yes. pass it over and uh, hear more about how that process works. Now it goes through great packaging you have here, by the way. Yeah, so packaging was one of our biggest issues when designing the shooter this year. Uh, this handoff it took a little bit for us to come up with. Uh, these indexers, like you said, help center it more, the note. Uh, and later on in the season, we added some guides on the inside of the shooter, on the sides, just 3D prints that basically compress the note about a half an inch, uh, about an inch on total. Um, and it basically helps us more accurate on the shots and uh, not wobble as much whenever we are actually shooting. Um, these, uh, the feeder wheels is what we call them, uh, from this back Falcon, uh, run from whatever we're collecting. And that is what is grabbing it from the um, collector. And that is what was originally stretching the notes and making them oblong and tearing them. Uh, so now uh, they basically center the note correctly right before it hits the flywheels, which are both powered on both sides by Falcon 500s. And they are using a double-sided belt on both sides. After we initially came up with gears and belts, but this is much more lightweight and we needed a lightweight for our wrist to move uh, because we uh, found very fast that our wrist needed to move up and down um, much easier with higher torque. So we had to add a higher gear reduction on this side. And we have a 80 to one underneath our shooter at our wrist. And then it also moves along this track and we wanted these uh, to have separate Falcons 
because we wanted one side to run faster than the other. So we also have orange rippy wheels on this side, so it spins it a little more and makes it even more balanced. Before we show off the shooter, let's actually pass over to Corbin first, talk about that elevator uh, that you have as well too, because uh, I'm guessing some of that all combines with into your different heights and shots and that sort of thing. Oh yeah, definitely. The, and then we'll um, talk of course about your uh, hooks as well too, love to hear more about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So the elevator is definitely like the um, center of this whole robot. We wanted to build something nice, simple and robust, so we have a continuously rigged um, two-stage elevator. If you two want to lift it up, I can show you, kind of show you the gearbox. So we have two connection points right here and up here and just flows through there into this gearbox down here and you can see it's pretty compact it's driven by two kraken x60s and um we have a continuous four spring to ensure the first stage comes down before the carriage does so it doesn't mess with any of our shots when we come up here and shoot up here but um yeah it's a really simple robust design inspired in part by high tide elevator a few years back but yeah did you all have this design like right away or what were some maybe other uh, prototypes you went with early on during the season? So we did look at doing a pink arm, kind of like we did last year. And um, then we decided that's probably not gonna really fly well in this game. We needed something that was quick, robust, stationary, and only really one point of contact. So we just switched to an elevator and it worked. Cool, can we see how a shot works out of this robot too? I'd love yeah, to see sure. uh, what are your positions made for that. And how, how high are you actually getting it in that shot? So we can shoot from ton, ton of positions. You said how high? Yeah. We can shoot from right here. We can come all the way up to um, about 48 inches max height. Okay, gotcha. And fire, but anything to get over defense, make quick shots. We can really do anything. And when you're doing an amp shot too, are you bringing that elevator up as well? Yeah, yeah. We bring it up to about 36 inches, and we actually just back drive it right out the back and it comes out. All right, bring we in one more note for me. Let's see how that yeah. works out. Comes in, we go up to amp. Can you fly over here and open that up? Yeah, there you go. Comes up and then comes back down. Pretty simple process, but we rarely miss our amp and it works almost every time. Cool, talk to me about these hooks on your robot too and how those are Yeah, sure, sure. So to climb, to trap, we have a really quick climb. We have a um, 14 to one ratio in our gearbox, so we can make our climb in under a second. We come up, the hook kind of gets into the climber, and then it pulls the chain down past these hooks, and it comes back and snaps on there. So yeah, it's a really simple climb, but... Yeah, hey, simple is what works a lot of times, right? That's so what we want, simple, totally robust love that. design. Uh, let's pass over to Curly, talk more about yeah, uh, the sure, uh, sure. climber itself. If there's anything else you want to add in that, but I really love your electrical work that's gone into this too. Very clean with that. So anything you want to add from climber and then talk more about just maybe some key tips in your electrical process. Yeah, so I do have a few tips on the climber. We started out with a gear and pinion gearbox here sure. and here on the other side. And the idea was to be able to pull up really, really high at the beginning of the year but um, it just never worked out. They were really, really heavy. And at the end of the day, after our first competition, we've implemented these passive hooks. And I just think that sometimes the simplest idea is gonna be the best um, for your team. And then with the electrical, we have, uh, we had a lot of packaging issues at the beginning of the year, trying to fit everything in. And so one of the things that we implemented was um, basically this second layer that comes up and uh, allows room for the Robo Rio above the uh, PDH. And we also made sure to map out the entire electrical panel and everything before we put the electrical in. So everything kind of flows in a circle around the PDH so that we can find every single wire that we need um, at the end of the day. and. Uh, we have everything labeled with numbers as well as everything in a mapping system so that we can find them if anything is to go wrong. So clearly we've had you on behind the bumpers before, so obviously yeah. you're veteran students you go through. How do you train uh, some of the younger students to actually do a good job with the electrical as well? Yeah, um, I think that I started the electrical my freshman year when all of the seniors who were doing electrical left and no one wanted to do it. Um, I think it's always left behind because sure. people are scared of it or something. But uh, it's just something that you have to take the time to keep electrical neat and tidy because at the end of the day, if you, if you rush it because you put it in the back um, of everything else that you're excited to do on the robot, then it's gonna break and you're gonna 
um, be really sad that you don't understand what is broken on the electrical. So making those maps, planning it out in CAD where everything's gonna go and sticking to the CAD is really important. And making you know 90 degree angles with your electrical, deciding where everything's gonna be is really good for new students as well. Well, very well done on this yeah. robot for sure. A great Thank looking you. bot. Let's wrap up, talk some of the autonomous areas. Uh, Matthew, we were talking earlier, you are talking about some of the different kind of zoning states that you have as well too. So I'd love to hear more about that and your conditional autos. Sure, so with our zoning states, one of the uh, big goals while we were programming this was especially to optimize it. And so between Greater Kansas City and this event, we've had a total recode on this robot to now have several different defined zones. And so now we have, uh, for example, over here, I have it pulled up right now, but we have Alliance Wing, Neutral Ring, and Opponent Wing. So we have several defined, defined states all right there where we can, uh, using the robot's location, say if we're in the Opponent Wing, for example, we can't shoot. Uh, our robot can't shoot that far, and so it shouldn't be allowed to shoot for our driver, who's a Force Corbin. But if we are in the Alliance side of things, then it should be able to shoot, and so then we allow it to do so. Um, and then, of course, we have feedback to our driver back uh, with a rumble of the controller to notify him that he can't shoot from that far. Um, of course, while we're passing as well, this elevator area comes up, but if we're going under the stage, then we can't do that. And so it uses zoning so that it will automatically go down when we go under the stage so that we don't do that. And we were able to do that just by defining rectangles on the field essentially sure. using um, positionings. So we say from two meters to four meters uh, for the X and then four to five for the Ys, whatever, that that area is the Alliance wing or the stage or that's how we're defining it in there. Um, and then as far as autos go for conditionals, um, having consistent autos is great, but we found that especially in a more competitive environment, especially with the race to the center line, we really wanted the ability to, if the first no isn't there, go straight to the second one. And so we have conditional logic in all of our autos now. So if we start on the amp side and our goal is to chase after the first one, and like I said, we notice the first one isn't there, then it will automatically turn and go to the second note, which is of course our next goal. And then at the end of all of our autos, it comes down to the end of the line, aims and then uses object detection using this photon camera right here to go down the line and catch any potentially missing autos, uh, sorry, notes that we missed during the auto. Uh, kind of clean it up during our middle auto, so at the uh, speaker and subwoofer, it'll catch the notes that might have been missed during the auto, just allowing for some auto cleanup um, and more efficiency in that way. Well, Bronco Boss, congratulations on a great season. Congrats on being here at IRI as well, too. I know many of us missed you. I'm sure you missed being at Champs, too. Uh, but we can't wait to see how you do here at IRI. So best of luck, and thanks for telling us more about your awesome robot here. Good luck at IRI. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.